So this is the body of the Tynar Supremacy Armour. Pretty much complete. The missiles and the burst cannons are not done. The head's not glued. His groin plate's not glued on. Basically they're all separate for painting purposes. And uh, there's a couple of little vents in the back that I just haven't been bothered to put in yet. But they don't really affect it. There are two things I would say you want to be careful of when you're building this model. The first thing is the feet. They were literally the first thing I glued up. I'm fairly sure they're the first thing in the instructions as well, but the first thing I glued up. The outside toes, so they're the medium sized toe. I've got mine pointing pretty much square to the big toe. I think if you move them back so they're maybe, you know, 10 degrees, 15 degrees from the square backwards, you'd get a much more stable base. I mean, mine's not unstable, but he's a little bit less stable than he could be would be the way I would describe it so something you probably want to look at when you go to glue yours up the second thing is if you have a look at his left shoulder so the right hand side of the, the screen there you can see a tiny gap between the main bulk of the body and I think that's an air intake at the top it's not a big deal it's just very very hard to get those there's three pieces that make up the back and it's very hard to get those lined up it just the the they're basically gluing it to a central pillar and it just it doesn't work very well but other than that this kit is brilliant it's so easy to put together the legs are so poseable you can essentially make him do the crouched kind of storm surgery look or you can have him almost standing completely upright i've tried to go for a slightly crouched leaning off to one side actiony kind of pose but you know it, it i think it looks fine i can't wait to do the arms and the the a big uh, torso weapon but that's all in the future I'll do a full shot of him once he's got all his weapons built and all uh, the other bits you know glued on so what I'm going to do next is some size comparisons and once I've done those I'll run some footage of the build now I'm only doing a select highlights of the build I'm not gonna you know it's it's gonna be very short bits of the build because in total there is about two and a half to three hours of footage of me building him. I figured that's boring as all hell and no one will want to watch that so yeah. But if anybody wants to see the full build let me know in the comments below and I will put that footage together as a single video and upload it. It'll get no views and the viewing retention will be terrible on it but it might help somebody you know so I'll do it if somebody wants it. But you have to promise to watch it yeah, 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 right. Anyway, let's get on with the, the size comparisons. There's our first size comparison. We have the standard XV8, which is not a small model, and it's tiny in comparison. Now we have the broadside, which again looks tiny in comparison, and it's not a small model either. So there is the commander, and he can fit comfortably underneath him, which, madness. So next up, there we have the ghost key, which again is a big model and is dwarfed by this, absolutely dwarfed. So there's a riptide. The riptide is about half the size, maybe a little bit smaller than half the size. What about our other big daddy of a suit? Which technically isn't a battle suit because it doesn't have the battle suit keyword, but Storm Surge. Now you can see from that that the Storm Surge is again maybe slightly over half the height. So let's reorganize this into a little family photo. So that, that is our Tau battle suit family photo. So that's how he's going to look next to your models. I don't know which ones you've got. It really does fit in well with him. It really matches the aesthetics. There we have the supremacy armor against a Wraith Knight. So you can see the height difference oops squeaky chair you can see the height difference there 
I mean, the very, very tippity toppity of a spiky bit. Maybe he's on a par, but the Wraith Knight is much more slender, obviously. There he is against your Imperial Knight. Mostly. Yeah, obviously he's not finished yet because there's bits of him still need glued on, but you get the general idea what he looks like. He is a fair bit taller than an Imperial Knight. So the final one we're going to look at is... So there he is against the Imperial Knight Castellan. Castellan? I think, yeah, Castellan. So he is much bigger than him. So of them all, only really the Wraith Knight comes close, and even then it's no real contest because it is such a scrawny beast. So he is big. There is the model, still in bits. It's all washed, gently scrubbed with a toothbrush, all in nice, slightly warm, soapy water. Not hot, just slightly warm. We've got a nice cold can of beer. That'll help us get through the evening. I've got a couple of, about well, maybe an hour and a half to work on this tonight, so I'm hopefully going to get it started. We've got the instructions, which are obviously very glossy and bright, but we're going to start at step one and work our way forward. For tools, I've got a razor saw. I've got a little file. I've got other files somewhere. If I need one, like a roundy one, I'll find it. But and I've also got a little uh, exacto blade just for scraping it off. I am not going to be gluing this tonight. I'm going to be using blue tack where appropriate. So that's poster putty just to stick the bits together. I for resin, because it's so much stiffer than plastic, you can't really get away with saying, oh, well, they don't fit exactly. I'll just squeeze them together and hold it until the glue dries. You kind of need to make sure it's a good fit. So there's a bit more filing and stuff. So I want to make sure that everything fits before I start gluing. But what I'm going to do now is get on with this. Uh, I'm going to leave the camera running and I'll speed it up or edit the bits out that are boring. And we'll see how we go from there. <sighs> Cheers. Oh god, I have needed that all day. If you've never worked with resin, it's a little bit softer than you first expect. You have to be a bit more gentle with resin than you would generally be for plastic. A gentle touch with a file is always better than rough. So that's pretty much all you do with each piece, is you <laughs> gently cut it off the the key, so the big bit there is the key, you just very gently chop it off that. So once again, so make sure it's nicely lined up. And if you've got good sharp cutters, you really don't have to worry too much about cutting it off because the resin, it is softer than you think. Find so if you can see that that is joined on there, what we're going to do is to take it flush, and we're just going to let the saw do its work. And we just want to make sure that we're sawing through the strut and not the piece. There we go. So likewise on this one. This one, as you can see, is slightly more complicated because it's a fair bit in. So what we'll do is we'll just take our saw. Actually, yeah, should be fine. So we just want to make sure we're not, uh, yeah, so I thought I was cutting into that, but I'm not. So what we want to do is make sure that we're sort of, rather than twisting it down to cut like, so we want to sort of make sure we're lifting the saw. If you can see the way I can change the... I don't want to be doing that. I want to be sort of almost twisting it the other way. Just to try to make sure that it's not cutting into the piece we want.
And obviously any mistakes we make we can fix later with uh, Milliput or green stuff. There's no big. So you can see we've got our uh, piece there. So there's still work to be done. But that's easy enough. We can do that with partly with our exacto blade. So if you can just see the little I might take a file to that. Well I'll almost definitely take a file to that. But all we're really doing Trimming that down. And in fact, that is probably the most awkward piece I've had to do so far. I'm sure they had a reason for doing it that way. I don't know what it is. But you don't want to spend too much time cleaning up bits that don't need cleaned up. So it's basically just get it good enough to be getting on with. Uh, you know, I think it's an external edge in places, but a file can take most of that off later. So that's that piece. Okay, so we are now in a position where, if I just get that bit on there, blah blah. So we're now in a position where we're going to start gluing the torso. So we need to get our super glue. Because remember that your ordinary polystyrene cement does not work on this. And we want to just apply some glue to our key areas. Just let the glue do its thing. That one. All right, time to do the waist. So we've got our little waist. Uh, I'm just going to double check to make sure this goes on the right way, just because. So, I'm just going to pop some super glue in there and give it a bit of a work around. Take that, drop that in, give it a spin just to coat that, and then try to get that roughly. There we go. Oops. Sorry, I just wanted to use this as the background because if I take that away, you'll see it sort of disappears. So, Actually, I'm going to need to zoom out again. This is so big. So there we are. So the torso is not going to go on like that because that would be backwards. It's going to sit there like that. That'd be awesome. And that is how you build a Tarnar Supremacy Armor. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. There's another couple of videos there you can click on. You can click on the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, like the video if you want to. Stick a comment down if you've anything to say. And in the meantime, happy wargaming. And I'll see you next time.